Okay, so now we're going to turn to part two, which is page 16 to 26. Um, so this is the second part. Um, and you might notice that there's a star at the top. Now those stars um, indicate the passing of time. Like one thing you'll notice within this novel is that um, time passes quite quickly. Like in the first three pages, there might be three years that is passing. And here now um, Rook, uh, is now 13 years old um, and this section is about him 13 to 15 years old and he is um, he moves from the academy into studying astronomy um, and then joins the marines so it starts off where um, Dr Adair takes Rook to Greenwich um, and to study at the Astronomer Royal um, and then his long trip is foreshadowed it's further than from home than he'd ever travelled before, so just across England. Um, but for him, it was unfamiliar as darkest Africa. Again, that's foreshadowing a longer trip later on and emphasising Rook's love for exploration and exploring the unknown, which was also touched on at the end of last chapter. Um, the going, just watching um, farm, ha farm hands and muddy hamlets made him drunk with novelty, which really is the emphasis for the um, exploring the unknown. And we're introduced to Dr. Vickery, and he's a minor character, really, other than these this um, you know, five, ten pages. He doesn't have any other role to play, but we do see what influence he has on Daniel Rook. Um, so probably because in many ways um, they're quite similar. So Dr. Vickery also finds it hard to meet other people's eyes. Um, and Dr Vickery isn't troubled by Rook's awkwardness, uh, probably because they recognise themselves in each other. And Dr Vickery teaches Rook many things um, about mathematics and astronomy and um, Here you'll notice on page 17 that um, Daniel Rook is at Greenwich for two weeks and felt for the first time in his life that he was in the right place, which echoes that yearning for a place to belong. So Dr Vickery teaches him about telescopes um, and he also teaches him chess um, and that represents strategy and planning and um, the danger of the pawn. Um, he reads a lot um, and he learns about comets. He reads about New South Wales, which again is a bit of foreshadowing uh, because he then joins Captain Cook on the 1788 voyage to New South Wales later on. Um, and Dr Vickery gives him a gift of his almanac for 1775. Um, and when Rook turns 15, um, he writes to Mr Vickery, he's hoping to get a position at the observatory, um, but um, unfortunately he's disappointed. Mr Vickery, Dr Vickery explains that there's no more astronomy needed, it's not a great kind of need in the world. Um, until somebody died there was no position, um, but Rook realised that he had to look somewhere else and um, he might have enlisted here, you see the bold section there, he might have enlisted in the Navy but naval commissions were too dear. Um, so back then there was a system that um, you could buy your commission, so you had to pay for an officer's position, um, you'll see this here, you had to pay money. Um, like a cash bond for good behaviour basically, um, but for your officer's position you kind of put a deposit down like a bond, um, and, but obviously the Naval Commission because he wasn't of some sort of <clears throat> aristocratic blood, he was an ordinary man, the son of a clerk, um, it was too dear for him but he instead um, got a commission, purchased a commission in here at the Marines. Um, so um, Rook um, 
and there are many soldiers needed because there happens to be uh, the American Revolutionary War that is happening at that time, for those of you that know a bit about history. Um, so they're at war, England and America are at war. Um, and so there's plenty of soldiers needed, so he's able to buy, buy that um, commission. Um, and at the bottom here of page 18, sorry, 19, he shows Anne and Bessie where he's going and he has this globe that he made himself out of wire and paper, like a paper mache globe, um, which I said represented that is patient, caring and diligent. So caring in that he made it for his sisters, um, diligent enough to create the globe and also the desire for exploration perhaps also represented in the globe. Um, then page 20, um, he explains to his sisters um, where he's going to go um, and his um, relationship with Anne is um, highlighted again in the quote here, she was the one person in the world with whom he had never needed to pretend to be someone else. Um, and then we have the star, which indicates a passing of time or a new scene. Uh, um, bottom of page 20, he is issued with a um, new uniform, a red jacket and white pants and a musket, a gun. Um, and he's taught to shoot the gun. Um, but you see the inner workings of Rook's mind through his explanation of the logic of how that works. Um, and um, he puts on this um, this new uniform and that really does symbolise and represent um, him being able to reinvent himself, connecting to that theme of identity. Um, he puts on a new uniform which is a symbol of his new self, the new beginning. So he could put on a brand new self, he's able to reinvent himself. Um, and so he's stationed on a ship called the Resolution. Um, and back then they all had hammocks. I think I've got some pictures here. Yes, so just look like that. Um, so soldiers would sleep in hammocks and the person next to him in the hammock was a man called Talbot Silk. Um, he's another one of the characters that you should remember. Um, and um, Silk is... Um, he is a bit of a joker, um, he's liked by everybody, he um, embraces Rook um, and this first interaction you can see the differences in the personalities but the fact that Silk embraces him saying you and I will get along famously 